So in the last video we talked about what earthquakes are and here you see another fault zone or a fault line that's actually happening because of a transform boundary. In this example it's actually a representation of something that happens in the St. Andrew's fault and you see that the blocks are moving in opposite directions which is going to be putting tension on the rock causing it to deform because the rock is locked because of the friction between the both blocks and this will remain until the friction is overcome by the stress and the rock will be allowed to deform back to normal and send a massive shock wave which you recognize as the earthquake. Now, when it comes to the anatomy of an earthquake, you need to understand, of course, that faults, especially lot faults, are always going to be involved, and that's why you shall see that in the screen. You're also going to have the focus. Now, the focus is the actual origin of the earthquake. This is the actual area where the rock actually deformed and cracked and ruptured or was released, or it is the point from where the actual elastic rebound originated, sending the shock wave which recognizes the earthquake and sometimes that's also referred to as the hypocenter all right and then the seismic waves will stretch from there and eventually hit the top or the surface now the point in the surface right above the hypocenter is referred to as the epicenter and then we refer to the depth of the earthquake as the distance between the epicenter and the hypocenter or focus and to find this epicenter scientists use things like shadow zones and lag times and triangulation in order to actually locate the seismic area or origin for the earthquakes and we're going to talk about a video about this later in the lecture series but for now all you have to understand is the basic pieces of the earthquake and where they all lie now the most common locations where earthquakes will definitely be found will be along boundaries and you can see uh, this picture which shows all the earthquakes that happened between the 1960s and the 2000s it will see that a lot of the earthquakes or the ma vast majority of the earthquakes happen along the folding that happens because of convergence and you see lots of these convergent boundary earthquakes happening here you also have earthquakes caused by divergent boundaries such as the ones in the mid-ocean ridge which causes Iceland so these rift zones and divergent boundaries you have the Indian Ocean India divergent boundary there as well. You have the Nazca plate divergent boundary here. So you have some divergent boundary earthquakes, some more convergent earthquakes here in Europe. So these were that create, of course, the it's a, they're kind of correlated with the Ring of Fire or the great mountain belts of the world. And then divergent boundaries, of course, are correlated with the rift zones. By the way, there's a new divergent boundary happening here in in uh, Africa, where another rift is actually taking place. So you see these things patterns and then you have these earthquakes which are isolated earthquakes in places far from any tectonic plate boundary and we call them hotspots all right so these hotspots um, are basically earthquakes which are not necessarily happening in any particular boundary now sometimes it actually is because of an ancient boundary as it is the case in this one here in the US but sometimes these hotspots are just isolated spots around the ocean and we'll talk about those as well Okay, now, another thing that we have to talk about when it comes to location of earthquakes is obviously the fault zones. Now, fault zones are basically areas where you have a lot of earthquakes happen. For example, you see here the fault zone associated with the St. Andrew's Fault in California, and you see how each earthquake is related to several others that already happen in the same zones. And this happens because this, all these earthquakes are along a long fault line where the crust is cracked in several many pieces as you see in this picture here and so earthquakes will happen all along those faults because of the pressure that the the actually that the rocks are being placed under and typically that's actually interesting whenever an earthquake will happen in one location it will often set off an earthquake in a different location so here you see what I'm talking about an, um, an earthquake will happen around the rupture zone and then several subsequent earthquakes will follow and what we call aftershocks and these aftershocks are happening because of the seismic waves generating a shock wave which may have put extra pressure on rocks which were already about to go along the same fault zone and then those rocks went as well and also ruptured and also set up their own elastic rebounds which then set off other elastic rebounds and so forth in a chain reaction that keeps happening until it finally slows down and and you basically set off a lot of, of rocks which were about to go just because of one original earthquake that happened here sets off all of these subsequent earthquakes along the fault line so that's what actually sets off aftershocks the original earthquake is kind of like the domino effect that sets off several other aftershocks now by studying the areas of the world that tends to have the most earthquakes we come up with the idea of 
hazard zones. Now, hazard zones are the areas of the world that experience the most earthquakes. For example, you see that the Asia is considered a very big hazard zone because of the big, big collision that India is undergoing, and also Saudi Arabian plate or the Af Arabian plate is actually colliding with in with Asia as well, and the whole continent of Africa is kind of pushing against Europe as well. So all of this area is going to be very, very active. And you also have other hazard zones here around the Pacific Ring of Fire, which is because of the, the subduction between the Pacific plates and the plates of Eurasia and so forth. And so a lot of earthquake zones will happen, actually happen because of the plate boundaries, as, you, as we talked about before. And you see that the U.S. has its own hazard map. And this particular hazard zone here is associated, of course, with the collision of the North American plate versus the Pacific plate, which actually is kind of slanted, which actually creates a transform boundary in the corner. But overall, it's kind of like a big convergent boundary that's happening there. And you also have the New Madrid earthquake, which is a high hazard zone associated with an ancient fault line that existed there a long, long time ago. So you still have a big, big fault line deep on the ground left over from a long, long period there. Now, earthquakes they actually tend to happen near the surface. And you think about it, why is this the case? Because remember that the, from the previous video, we studied the idea that the rocks near the surface are a little more brittle than rocks deeper on the ground. So the rocks deeper on the crust are more likely to undergo plastic flow than actually crack. And the cracking of the rocks is necessary for the rupture and slippage to take place, which will allow the rock to actually return back to normal shape and setting off the elastic rebound. So earthquakes rarely ever happen deeper than 12, 15 kilometers deep because at that point the, uh, the lithosphere is already getting kind of moist, kind of hot, and, not, and that's going to make it less likely to actually um, crack, in, which is necessary for earthquakes to take place. And notice that it's also, you also have the, like, uh, what I call the hot spot for earthquakes, which is there around 6 kilometers deep. And that seems to be the area where the rocks are under just right just the right the amount of pressure, just not too hot enough that it will actually make more earthquakes happen there than anywhere else in the thing. So you see that in over 5,000 earthquakes measured in Southern California in, in, in over 17 years, the majority of them happen above 15 kilometers deep and ne none of them below 20 kilometers deep as you can see. All right. Now, earthquakes sometimes happen, like I just told you, far away from boundaries. All right. One of the reasons for that might be a new boundary. So, for example, if you look now in Africa, you will find what we call a rift um, valley. And that's basically a sequence of horse and gravens like we talked about in the previous chapter. And actually, I should have talked about that and I forgot. But here it is. If you look at the rift of Africa, it's actually a sequence of horse and gravens and creating valleys and ridges, which actually what's happening is that Africa is shattering. And the pieces of Eastern Africa are actually becoming a new piece of the crust, which is actually shifting away from Africa, just like Arabia and Madagascar did, or in India, which used to be here. And so a new ocean is growing, and eventually, millions of years from now, might be there. And you see how this fault zone here is extracting all around the, the actual African eastern side, which is basically because of a rift. So sometimes earthquakes will happen far from boundaries because of new rifts. Earthquakes will also happen on established rifts, such as, for example, the one that's happening in Iceland, which is a visible mid-ocean ridge, basically. Iceland got so much volcanic activity that's considered a large igneous province, but not because of a hot spot, but because of a massive amount of magma seeping through the surface along the lines of uh, the mid-ocean ridge of the Atlantic. And you see another rift valley forming in Iceland because of this. You see horses and gravens just like you see in, in um, Africa, except this is an established rift. It's been there, as we know, for at least 300 million years because this is the rift that would contribute to the separation of Pangaea. Sometimes um, these earthquakes will happen away from boundaries also because of hot spots. Now, we also already talked about this when we did plate tectonics, but there are areas of the mantle which have a larger intensity of magma, and we call those magma plumes. And as those magma plumes rise to the top, they form hot spots. And this magma action pushing the plate and cracking through it actually generates earthquakes because it puts pressure on the rocks, makes the rocks bend. Now, this is not really plate tectonics, but it's deformations of the crust. So remember, 
those same deformations, the subsidence, the uplifts that can happen because of greater magma intensity or because of greater weight. So earthquakes could also happen, makes, for example, if you put too much weight or a new mountain on a certain area, which will push the cross down and will deform the rocks underneath the mountain, which may set off earthquakes in that area. And so deformations of the crust and hot spots are also things which will cause earthquakes, and that could happen in any place, even far from the boundaries. By the way, notice that the, well, the biggest hot spots in the world is along the, is in the middle of the Pacific, and that's the hot spots that create islands such as the Hawaiian island chains. There's another very strong hot spot under the African plate, which is where Pangaea used to be at, and that's still left over from that formation, and that's actually what's causing the rift I just talked about, the, re the, the idea that the magma there is very, very strong. And you see how it's interesting that those plumes are actually on separate areas of the world. But the funny part is that the plume that's under Africa is actually a diversion plume, as you see in the picture there, and that's what's causing the rift. But the plume that's actually under the Pacific plate, it's more like a vertical plume, that, which is what's causing the Hawaiian hot spots and other things like that. And this was because the plate is moving, but the hot spot is not, uh, you're going to create island chains like we talked about and everything. But earthquakes are going to be common along these areas as well. Now, another reason why earthquakes can happen far from boundaries is what we call deep fault lines or ancient fault lines. For example, here in the U.S., you see something along the northeastern side of the U.S., and we call the New Madrid Hazard Zone. And these earthquakes are actually happening because of an ancient fault line that's there, left over from the formation processes of the actual North American plate. That very, very ancient fault line that's very deep on the ground will actually create this New Madrid fault, which actually separates, makes earthquakes the same way that the same makes earthquakes in California. And so you have two major hazard zones in, in the U.S., one caused by the transform boundaries along the California um, plates, and one that actually is happening here on the New Madrid because of an ancient fault line. And so this is an example of something that can also cause earthquakes away from boundaries in the specific place of a deep ancient fault line. On the next video, we're going to be talking about seismic waves or the waves which are generated by disrupted events, which include earthquakes. See you guys then.